Hey, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Guys, today we are going to talk about healthcare part two. So if you did not see my first video a couple weeks ago, I will link it above. And I got a great response and a lot of interest. And so I thought I'd make a part two because there's quite a few things I didn't get a chance to talk about in the first video. So I think you're gonna really enjoy this. I'm gonna talk about the difference between healthcare in the US compared to New Zealand. And at the end, so make sure you stay tuned, I am going to tell a personal story about what it was like having kids in the US and how much it actually costs. So make sure you stay tuned in the end to see that and subscribe below. Here we go. Okay, so let's just summarize New Zealand healthcare and what it's like for somebody living there, living here. So first of all, just basic public health care is free. You can also buy private insurance, which then enables you to just go to the doctor whenever you want or go to a specialist or maybe get that uh, surgery done quicker. Uh, so that's a nice option and it's not outrageous. We pay, uh, you know, $50 for a family of six for that insurance here. Uh, because the idea of healthcare in New Zealand is very different. They consider it a basic human right that people have healthcare and can be treated if they are not feeling well. They also have very low cost prescriptions. Doesn't matter where you go. It can either be free, $5, $10, very low cost. They also don't require that you have pre-existing conditions. So, I mean, they can't deny you insurance if you have pre-existing conditions, which is not true in the U.S. and I'll overview that in a minute. And they also have ACC, which is like they cover you if you have an accident, whether it's even your fault. It doesn't have to be an accident at work. It can be an accident anytime and they will cover your uh, salary up to 80% for as long as it takes for you to recover. So it's pretty great. You don't feel bad if you have an accident when you're in New Zealand and if you get sick, you know, you don't really hesitate. Everything is much easier and uh, free here in New Zealand. Okay, so now let's talk about healthcare in the US. Now, if you haven't seen my other video, I'd probably watch that first, but today I'm gonna to talk about a couple topics that were really important that I didn't get a chance to cover in the last one. What's not included in this video is I'm not gonna talk about Medicare and Medicaid. Medicare is the program in the US for uh, people that are over 65, and Medicaid is for kind of the, the, the poorest of the nation. Uh, and those are different programs and they have different rules around them. Now, now, there's lots of pros and cons to both of those, but we will not be talking about that. So in this video, I'm just going to talk about kind of the majority of your life and living with insurance in the U.S. Okay, so the first thing I'd like to talk about is the cost of insurance. And I think that this is one of the biggest problems in the U.S. is that there's no, you have no idea how much anything costs because the way that it works is it's insurance based. And so you can't go to a doctor and say, how much will it be for this MRI or for this x-ray? because they're gonna bill the insurance, hope that they cover it, and then pass whatever's left on over. And so it's just, it's always changing and then nobody really knows the cost of anything, which is really ridiculous and like really, really frustrating. And so uh, the way that it works for most people, if you have a job, you will get health insurance through your company, hopefully. And the amount, now I think the average is like 10, 15,000 per employee. And then the company will pay a portion of that. And that portion varies depending on your company. So like a company's benefits will be different and their health insurance benefits will be good or bad based on how much they pay. And then you have to choose your deductible. It can be like a 500, a thousand. A lot of people will do a 2,500 deductible. And what that means is they will cover none of your costs until that deductible is paid. And then after that, it's generally 80, 20 or 70, 30, where um, they'll pay 80% and you pay 20. And that's generally how it is. So you're paying for insurance every month. <laughs> Plus you have to pay your deductible before it even goes into effect. And then you have to pay still 20% on top of that. And then there's co-pays like when you go to the doctor and that sort of thing. Now, they also offer a program called a health savings account through a lot of companies where you can save money tax-free to pay down those deductibles. But I just feel like they just make everything difficult. Like you have to go through all of these hoops just to go to the doctor, right? And one of the biggest problems with having insurance associated with your job is that so many people stay with jobs that they absolutely hate 
for years and years and years of their life because of the insurance, because they need the insurance, because maybe the insurance is really good. Because if you are self-employed or you buy your own insurance, for us, I think we only were a family of four at the time and I had, we were self-employed and we paid a thousand dollars a month just to have insurance and that insurance like covered nothing. Like it was really bad. And I'm gonna tell a story about that in a minute. And so it's very stressful for Americans to not have insurance. So they work at jobs that they don't even like. And what's also difficult is that no matter how good your job is and how good the insurance is for the associated with that job, they will still not pay for pre-existing conditions. So if you have a disease or an ailment that you've maybe even had your whole life and it's a doctor at some point said, oh, you have this, then now it's a pre-existing condition and no insurance company will cover that. So you will have to pay for all of the prescriptions and everything that that does not cover. It's just insane. So it begs the question, what happens if you don't have insurance? Now there's a couple things to think about. It's not that big of a deal if you're just going to get a checkup or get something checked from a doctor and you say, I don't have any insurance, you need to pay direct. And most doctors are very reasonable. And I noticed this when I went back to the States, even with insurance, I still asked what that would be because I would almost prefer to pay a price that I actually know than one that might be sent through the mail and I'm shocked at the price. <laughs> so you um, can just, you just would have to pay out of pocket if you don't have insurance, which is generally fine for like basic things. The problem that, this, <laughs> that you run into is if you don't have insurance and you have an emergency or you have a huge accident or you know something huge, you get cancer, you have something, you are not covered and you are basically bankrupt. There's no option for you. You're basically bankrupt. If you have an emergency and you come off the street, the way the way that it works in hospitals, if, they, if you enter into the ER like with an emergency, they have to take you, even if you don't have insurance. So in an emergency situation, they have to take you, but you still have to pay. But otherwise, doctors can turn you away if you don't have insurance. So it can be very, very stressful for people that don't have insurance. So the Obama administration came up with the Affordable Care Act a couple of years ago um, that I believe has been overturned by Trump. I haven't been in the U.S. in a couple of years, so correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but the Affordable Care Act was just an act put in effect where it would offer insurance for so many people because there was a significant portion of the U.S. that wasn't insured at the time because of all of these different reasons. And so um, while a lot of people think, oh, well, that's great and that's important, one of the biggest downfalls is that is that, that it was... <laughs> It was a forced program. So like if you were a healthy 20 year old and you just decided you didn't want insurance, uh, you had to acknowledge that you didn't, you don't have the Affordable Care Act insurance and you don't have any other insurance and you have to pay tax on it. So you like got charged a fee for not having it, which just kind of put a lot of Americans off to be honest. And so I'm not saying that it was a bad program overall. I mean, anything to kind of fix the situation. And I think that that's the way that they could cut some of the costs. Uh, but yeah, there's that also is why things kind of put a bad taste in people's mouths. <laughs> Another thing to think about in terms of emergency is ambulance. Like how much does an ambulance cost in the US? So if you have insurance, an ambulance will cost on average, $450. Now I remember with the insurance we had, I had called once and it was $250. So that's an average. But if you don't have insurance and you call an ambulance, it's $1,200. Plus you have to pay mileage apparently. I was just reading up on that and I was like, oh my goodness. And then if you have a pre-existing condition, like I said, you're kind of out of luck. So the healthcare system in the US is shockingly horrible compared to what I'm experiencing here. So a lot of Americans don't like the idea of like they think socialized healthcare is bad and I won't have any control over it and and it's going to the care is going to be not as good, right? And that's generally the the feeling of Americans and why they don't want to change it. Uh, and so, but there's plenty of countries that have kind of both, where they have just a basic health care for free, but then also offer um, uh, an insurance where you can go to specialists and 
you know, you can pick your level of service and what you have, like in Australia has a good one and in New Zealand and other places, a lot of places have really good ones. So other people have figured this out. And so like the US really needs to figure this out. Okay, <laughs> because it's really, it's, it's, they, it's, it's not a, an either or, it can be an and. So yes, if you have like a free socialized, if that's what you wanna call it, it's more, it's better termed universal healthcare, then um, everybody gets it. Yeah, okay, so like the service isn't as good when you have a government run system, it can be very inefficient. Whereas you can go to the US and you'll have state of the art facilities and you'll have amazing cancer places that are just amazing. Like the hospital that I went into for my final pregnancy was unbelievable. Like literally my husband had to pull me out. Like most people are ready to leave the hospital. Not me. My room had jetted spa tub, this amazing shower that had like 16 different things squirting out at one time. They had amazing nursing staff. Somebody ran every, every day around the same time would bring hot warm cookies to you. And then another lady that would come in and rub your feet. So yes, we figured out how to provide really great service, but only if you can afford it. And <laughs> And it's not great, you know? So like, I don't know, I go, that you go from one extreme to the other. So is it better that people that can afford it or have good insurance can actually have really good healthcare and then nobody else gets it? And then, you know, and so like, where's the balance? And I, a lot of countries have figured out this balance where you can, you know, have a, a health insurance or something for our healthcare system where everybody can go to it, but then have an option for if you wanted that fancy <laughs> hospital for, um, or if you, uh, for, you know, having a baby or you had cancer and you wanted to go to the special place and then you can't, but it's just, it's so expensive and it's all privatized and it's very different. And so that's just a little information for you that I thought you would enjoy in regards to healthcare system in the US and really understanding what it's like for families to live in that. So I wanted to share a quick story about uh, the birth of my children. I had two of my children because I also did a video on you know what it's like for maternity leave and uh, for women in the US, so I'll link that above as well. But let's talk a little bit about what the cost was for me. So the cost was covered by insurance and two other ones, we were self-employed. We paid for insurance, $1,000 a month, and we thought you know we it would be covered because I'm paying so, you know, that it would be the same as being with a company insurance, but no. It wasn't because the other ones were, you know, they weren't cheap, five, $10,000 in it to have children, to go through pregnancy, to have all of the checkups. Uh, so that wasn't as unreasonable. So I'm paying $12,000 a year to have insurance of which when I have the baby, they tell me that it's only going to cover up to 5,000, which didn't even get me through the cost of prenatal care with my doctor before I had the baby. <laughs> So that was stressful. And so then you have to start looking at costs, like which hospital is gonna be the cheapest for me to go to. I even brought my own drugs because they were charging me $25 for a Tylenol or be the same as a Panadol in New Zealand. It was very, very stressful. <laughs> so it would have been uh, my second child. Was it my second? Yeah, one of my children I had um, when we were self-employed and it was, $30,000 to have a child with insurance because I'm self-employed. And when I got these bills, I was so shocked and so frustrated when you're trying to be a legitimate citizen, when you're trying to have insurance, you're trying to follow the rules and do everything. I am still charged like who can afford that? You know, and then I go, can I get a rundown on all the charges? And that's when I saw $25 for one Tylenol and just outrageous prices for things. And I don't, I wouldn't have even had that. I didn't even, and that's the other problem is they're giving you all of these things that maybe you don't care if you have it and then charging you later an astronomical amount of money. And it literally puts you in debt and it puts a lot of people in a very difficult situation. And so what I did, <laughs> because I'm not like your normal person, as you can tell, is I called the head of the hospital that I was at. And it was not an expensive hospital. It was just like the basic hospital in the city. And I called up the guy and I said, I wanna talk about this insurance bill. 
And I want to talk about the fact that I have a company of which I have employees, how I'm contributing to society and helping the economy. And I have my own insurance that's outrageous and doesn't pay anything. And now I'm getting a bill for $30,000 and this is reasonable. And how is this reasonable? Like I'm trying to do everything that I can, you know, and if someone homeless off the street comes in and has a baby and you deliver it because it's an emergency for them and you, you know, you want to charge them, but they have no money and they have no house or anything like that or any credit that matters. So your credit score in the U.S. is very important. So if like I don't pay a bill, if I don't pay a medical bill, it affects my credit and then I can't buy a house, can't buy a car, can't buy anything. And so, you know, some people don't care about that. So they'll just, you know, do what they need and whatever. And they're not good citizens, let's just say, okay. <laughs> and so I'm like, these people can do this, but I'm trying to be like a real citizen. He's like, yeah, I totally agree. He's like, if you pay half of this within 90 days, I'll, I'll, I'll cut it in half. So he basically like, didn't even have to look at the bill, knew how much money they were probably making on this and just said, pay half by this date and uh, I won't charge you anymore. So I worked it out that I did because I was about to save a boatload of money, which was still hard to come up with half of that amount of money. It's hard to suddenly, oh sure, I have 15 grand to pay for this. And we're talking about ch a child, you know, like you're having a child, like this should be a wonderful special time, but you're sitting here worried about all of these costs. Anyway, Ah, <sighs> so that was the stressful part. And ever since then, it was very stressful for me to have kids because I was nervous because I, and the reason why my bill, they're saying, well, the average cost of pregnancy is 5,000. I'm like, how is it 5,000 when it doesn't even cover all of the prenatal care? And then basically it covers also if you have like a baby in like 10 seconds, naturally. I didn't have any babies naturally. I had all C-sections because of, of, you know, just the way that I am. And so, you know, and so like I have to pay $30,000 because that's the way that I am. And so this is how it is. So I hope that I gave you some insight on what it's like um, living in the US and the healthcare system and getting a little bit more insight on that. I don't wanna take up too much of your time today. I would love to hear your stories. Share with me what it's been like for you if you live in the US and have had these kind of experiences and um, or if you've lived in New Zealand or any other country and you've had good experiences with health care or having kids and babies, I'd love to hear it. See you next week.